we can uh, start our uh, third day of uh, uh, ECSS, a real day, not a virtual day, even if the, the, the conference is virtual. Um, so welcome this morning. We have the session uh, of, um, dedicated to a workshop that we have prepared, prepared with national associations. And we have started a very successful cooperation with uh, the various national associations since some years. And so we look forward to do even more in, in, in this area. And uh, I'll, um, uh, before starting, I will thank uh, Pekka uh, and um, Kim, Pekka Orponen from Finland, and Kim Menz from uh, the Netherlands. For, uh, from the Belgium from, for uh, having organize, organized this session and I give the floor to Pekka for the introduction of uh, the structure of this session. Pekka, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you Henrik and, and welcome everyone. So, so I'm, I'm Pekka Arpon, I'm from Aalto University and, and, and from Finland and also I'm on the, serve on the Infotics Europe board. I'm glad to see all of you here and, and um, and so, so welcome again. So, so we have a rather tightly scheduled event. So, so, so let's uh, review the practicalities so that that uh, we we get this uh, running smoothly. So, so first, okay. So the, we are structuring. Okay. So the, the broad topic is uh, in informatics and, and and interdisciplinarity, which is, uh, as we all know, this is a very broad and complex topic and we, we cannot cover all the aspects by far in this workshop but we somehow try to make a map of the landscape and then discuss if there's interest to continue more deeply in, in, in some of these direction or, or what, what to do. But so, so we have now structured this first meeting into four sessions which are kindly chaired by four uh, uh, distinguished members of the community. Uh, each session is 40 minutes. The first session is focuses on uh, interdisciplinarity and informatics and research. It's chaired by Gerald Steinhardt from Informatic Austria. Then the ne next, next session starts at actually 9.50, so 40 minutes. Uh, it's a uh, focus on education and it's being chaired by Bart de Moon from uh, uh, from well Belgium Forum for Informatica, Wetenschappen, sorry for my Flemish. So then we'll have a, a 10 minute coffee break at 10.30, followed by a session of uh, large scale trends in uh, um, interdisciplinarity as it pertains to informatics uh, chaired by uh, Paola Zeni from the Italian group in the area Informatica. And then we'll have a, a the final session is on societal aspect chaired by Martin Glins from the Swiss Informatics Research Association. And, and, and many thanks for the, our chairs who have... Um, okay, so, okay, so, okay, before going further practicality, so we'll conclude then with a half an hour session about the conclusions from the day and, and how to continue this work. So, so now many thanks for our chairs who have, oh, okay. So now I realize we don't, I guess we don't have a, but the next slide is on the practicalities. If you move, can you, yeah. Okay. So before going to this slide, so, so can you go still back to the previous one? Uh, sorry. So the chairs have each prepared a um, set of three or four sort of a focus questions, which, um, uh, you, you have received a link to and uh, okay so they're available there on the on the uh, um, workshops web page and you have received the link and I hope you have the time to uh, consider these focus questions a little bit ahead of time but but anyway we try to um, structure the discussion around these uh, focus questions um, proposed by the, by the chairs, but the chairs will be running their sessions in whatever way they, they, they see most appropriate. But so that we have some structure, we, we, we start with these specific questions. And, and please, if you haven't had a look at them yet, so then please have a look at the uh, discussion topics. 
which actually now kindly um, somebody from the office kindly put on the chat so you can even get the link also from there if you, have, if you haven't had the opportunity to have a look at the link early. So now we can please go to the next slide. So here are the practicalities uh, once again, but they may be even more important than and the other and the previous uh, days of the, of the meeting because this is a very tightly scheduled um, event. So first of all, please note that the workshop is recorded. If you uh, disagree with this, so please uh, say, say that now so that we, so that we know. Um, okay, so, and as I said, so the discussion topics, they are available in the chat box and I hope you can find it in Zoom chat box and, and the links there. And, and, and uh, we will also use the chat box um, to complement the discussion. So, so now, this is of course, this is an interactive uh, discussion meeting. That's the essence of the, of, of the meeting. So I would uh, hope and expect to have lots of uh, views and contributions from, from you and uh, kind of a very energetic discussion. However, this now we need, this is tricky to manage in this, this uh, remote meeting times. So please uh, raise your Zoom electronic hand if you wish to speak. I hope you can find the raise hand button on the, on the Zoom um, window. If you cannot, so please uh, put a note in the chat and, and we can, or maybe you can find the note in the in window in the chat either. So. Uh, anyway, so I guess by this time people know how to how to raise the hand. So, because that's the way that we try to maintain order in the in in the uh, giving giving the turns at the meeting. And uh, basically, the the chair is uh, giving out the turns, but the office is also Francisca promised to support, keep some track on both the hands and, and the chat, so to, we can try to be fair in uh, assigning the, the terms. And uh, I'm, 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 unfortunately, Zoom doesn't keep uh, priority ordering of the request for terms. So there are bound to be some failures. We apologize for those already ahead of time, but we do our best. And, uh, and uh, what else? Am I missing something? For, okay, so Francisca is the, main support person of the office in this and, and, and uh, Svetlana is also following and, and, and helping. So, so Francisca, did I miss something from the practicalities? No, I think we're all set. Okay, so I hope everybody has now has become, become very proficient in using Zoom during this uh, pandemic period and particularly during this event, so you know. You already know you are kind of very familiar with the practicality. So please raise your hand and use the Zoom chat and we do our best and we hope for a very energetic discussion. And uh, we kind of in, in informative and, and uh, enjoyable workshop. So if there are any questions, please on the practicalities, please indicate them now. And, uh, and if there are no questions on, on, the, on these things, so I'll be glad to hand the session over to Gerald Steinhardt from Informatik Austria, and he will now lead the discussion for the next 40 minutes. Gerald, please. Okay, thanks, uh, Pekka. Um, welcome to the first session interdisciplinarity in informatics research. Uh, I will be uh, the chair of this session, Gerald Steinhardt. I'm um, uh, from uh, Vienna University of Technology in Austria. Uh, we could uh, raise um, uh, a, a thesis and put a thesis here uh, on um, uh, interdisciplinary research Inter interdisciplinary research is largely wished for, but widely not esteemed and not sufficiently supported. An initial thesis, and um, if we look at uh, the Informatics Europe report, 
uh, the wide role of informatics at universities uh, from 2019. Um, uh, they um, dealt with the role of interdisciplinarity in research. Next slide, please. And um, if we exaggerate a little bit, um, we can say there's a widespread claim for interdisciplinary research, but um, um, in, at universities, funding institutions, and so on. <clears throat> But frequently, uh, this claim is largely theoretical. There's little or no funding. Interdisciplinary research is usually held in low esteem compared uh, with uh, discipline specific research. It's evaluated by, mainly evaluated by discipline specific criteria um, especially um, uh, when we go to uh, funding decisions, reviewers are frequently oriented towards discipline-specific criteria. So interdisciplinary proposals largely um, fall between the cracks. Despite of the widespread proclamations of the importance of interdisciplinary research. And we have a, a very often a lack of strategic planning towards interdisciplinary research and its advancements. Next slide, please. We also can identify uh, some concerns um, with respect to interdisciplinary calls. Um, there might be or is a forming of, uh, as I call it, predatory alliances uh, to secure uh, funding without substantial interdisciplinary cooperation. Um, another concern um, is uh, the, um, uh, that um, interdisciplinary research focuses on how informatics can support the other disciplines with the effect that the scientific progress uh, furthers primarily the other disciplines and has little or no impact on the scientific progress in informatics. Another concern that lower quality proposals could be accepted because of the promotion of interdisciplinary research compared with single discipline ones. And the last concern is that a significant increase of interdisciplinary research in informatics could weaken informatics as a scientific discipline. Some colleagues think so. Given the rather limited time for discussion, I would like to focus on identifying the fields where we agree on the need for action, as well as on having a look at the best ways to pursue our goals. Next slide, please. So, as a first step, I would like uh, to raise the question, how should interdisciplinary research be carried out so that informatics benefits most from it uh, and does not serve as an ancillary discipline. The focus is informatics between ancillary discipline and enabling science in interdisciplinary research. We also could say, or does significant, a significant increase of interdisciplinary research in informatics weaken informatics as a scientific discipline? And I would raise this question here, the first question, and uh, we should discuss that in uh, about 10 to 15 minutes and then go on to the next question. So, any comments, questions, statements on this question? How should interdisciplinary research be carried out so that informatics uh, does not only serve as an ancillary discipline um, and support uh, the advancement of other disciplines, but fosters, and, uh, fosters in, uh, the solving of interdisciplinary problems and or uh, the advancement of, uh, and development of informatics itself? Yeah, Enrico, please. Yeah, I mean, since nobody wants to start, I will start. Um, I think uh, an important element of this uh, is our uh, um, 
willingness to explain uh, to people from other disciplines the difference between informatics as a science uh, and hence the methods of informatics and informatics as a technology. And this is not because uh, that they, I mean, are, 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 are bad. I mean, it is simply that they do not understand because the, the, the widespread feeling is that informatics is, means having a computer, accessing uh, some remote databases and uh, doing some uh, processing of data. This is not informatics. This is information technology. This is something that people uh, could do from a conceptual viewpoint, even without informatics. So uh, the, 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 no, I don't. I, I will not explain you what informatics is in terms of principles, but because all all of, all of us know very well. But people in other disciplines they do not understand this, and th th therefore it is required. Uh, patience and is required time, is required a, a lot of uh, uh, discussion to let them understand this. I, I, I have had a little bit of experience in bioinformatics and I, I remember the uh, most of time in the initial meeting was spent to clarify to uh, biologists that the fact that uh, they were using some databases was, was not uh, uh, did not imply that they were doing informatics. They were simply using simply using tools. So I think this is an important uh, component. The, uh, the the education component, the educational component uh, in the interaction of being with uh, with other uh, discipline. That's uh, my, my my first stimulus. Okay, thanks, Enrico. Uh, but didn't you experience that, um, uh, especially uh, the engineering disciplines, um, uh, very often think they do interdisciplinary research when they do computational science and engineering? Yes, that, that's right. But on one side, we, we can say that they are engineers. I mean, I, I, I am an engineer, so I mean, this is not intended to be uh, as, a, as a bad comment, but uh, I, I think informatics. Uh, I, I thought yesterday in the in the in the in one session, informatics uh, is a, a kind of disciplines that is more similar to to medicine in, in the sense that it has the root in the science, but then it has to solve problems that regards human beings, and uh, it's more difficult from this viewpoint from pure engineering because in pure engineering you I mean you have to build a bridge. I mean. Of course, there will be people passing on the bridge, but you can model those people very, very precisely with their weight. We, we cannot model people in informatics in the same way. That, that, that's why, I mean, a lot of uh, system uh, fails uh, because uh, during their building, you I mean, discover that you have not taken into account all the requirements and, and so on and so forth. Um, so, uh, the computational part is an important part of, uh, of informatics, but it's not exactly what informatics is. I mean, people were doing computational sciences since the 50s or the 60s. I mean, in, in the beginning, uh, above it all, the physicists or just think to people doing astronomy, they, they, they need to do computation. But the computational part is, is not the essential part, even if it remains in the, in the, in the name sometime. Yesterday, you have seen the the, the keynote lecture by Ivan Birney, where you said computational biology and bioinformatics are the same thing that, I mean, we can accept it. It's not exactly the same, but I mean, we can survive with this, but we have to stress this, this issue. And this is related also to your second question. We have to stress the, the essence of informatics is in the method we use, the approach we take, which is the approach of the automatic processing of data, not, not because we want to know the number at the end, but uh, in the spirit of what uh, uh, Hilbert uh, told in, in, the, in the Paris Congress in uh, 19, what can be automatically proved? I mean, we, which are the limit uh, of what can automatically be done in any disciplines? I mean, the Hilbert question was related to mathematics, but now we have this question in, in, every, in every discipline. So again, in bioinformatics, we, we, which process that we find in life can be modeled by our means as uh, automatic 
process, process that have an, an automata running them. And all the, this, this viewpoint on, on, on our disciplines and on interdisciplinary research is something that uh, I mean, the other disciplines, they, they, they do not have. That's, that's why we have to, to, to insist on this. OK, uh, thanks, Enrico. What's uh, the experience of the others uh, when, um, uh, when you do uh, interdisciplinary research? Um, is it easy for you to formulate um, interdisciplinary goals, um, or is the expectation that uh, you as a uh, computer scientist um, support uh, the other disciplines in solving their problems with uh, informatics tools. What's your experience in the other countries? Um, well, uh, no actual experience, <clears throat> but uh, observation. Yeah. Um, when we take on the hat of, say, a uh, biologist or a, uh, well, researcher in geography or things like that, they typically, what their need actually is with respect to informatics is this role of, well, using informatics as a tool, as a kind of, well, auxiliary discipline. Um, from their perspective, it's primarily that informatics help them solve their problem in the same way as they use well mathematical methods for solving their problem. So I think from, for informatics, the challenge actually, actually for interdisciplinary research is figuring out whether there are problems on the side of, well, um, the other disciplines, which can on the one hand side be solved with some of the things we already have, but for solving them better, we need better other more advanced informatics techniques. And that then could be a kind of, well, well, win-win situation where we actually can do genuine informatics research, for example, for, well, improving certain methods or being able to empirically test whether certain methods actually work in the way uh, as we envisage them, which is a genuine informatics research. And on the other hand, well, our uh, disciplinary partners get this kind of, well, tool thing and support that they need. Probably we will not really profit from their methods. What we primarily can profit is that we have application fields where we can test our ideas in reality. Okay, thanks Martin. Uh, any additional comment? If not, uh, uh, I think Gordana okay. raised her hand, so yeah. we can. Okay, Gordana. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I have uh, some experience with the interdisciplinary work, and I prefer to think of my research as part of informatics in the term, uh, in, in the sense as it is used in Europe, and I think. If we want to combine with philosophy, ethics, <clears throat> gender studies, uh, many other things which are much broader than Shannon information and what we do uh, in, in terms of mathematical and uh, formal methods, then I believe that we should uh, embrace a broader idea of informatics that will be able not only to support this mechanistic part which will be scientific, but also to give us possibility to claim that even those other fields are ours. In, in, in the sense, uh, as, as Enrico said, we have a specific uh, approach, we have a specific framework, but uh, anyway, we, we must have <clears throat> rights to approach, for example, ethics 
from our own framework and in, include ethics as a part of the whole idea. Not only ethics, but many, many other uh, fields, uh, as, as I mentioned. So that not, not informatics grows into monodisciplinary field, but uh, uh, distinctly shows that it is transdisciplinary or interdisciplinary and so on. Okay, thanks, uh, Guadana. So we have uh, two views now. Um, one formulated by Martin is uh, that uh, in any case, uh, we should formulate a genuine um, informatics research questions within um, interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary research projects. Um, and uh, the other one um, uh, is, uh, has been formulated by Gordana, um, uh, who says um, we should uh, also address um, a kind of um, interdisciplinary research problems and include aspects of other disciplines in our research, uh, in our research, yeah, uh, yeah. So the question is, um, is it necessary uh, for interdisciplinary research in informatics always to formulate um, genuine info core informatics questions or does there also exist something uh, like um, uh, an interdisciplinary project, yeah? Um, uh, that's, um, uh, uh, that um, a trend is a transcendent to the uh, specific disciplines. I have a comment, Gregor. Yeah, yeah. you can hear me. Yeah, Eka? Um, yeah. I think I think we need both. So what I uh, have experienced in my own research and my own environment is that uh, we, as informatics, we have to offer um, kind of tools for the others, uh, like we see now with the, all the data science stuff. So, Artificial and stuff. Uh, not other people would like to analyze their data, so it's our task. Uh, I think as computer scientists, uh, to uh, build tools that they can use, and um, also we have to make them. Uh, also, we need tools which are in this uh, situation understandable by the others, and that they use them in the right situation. So sometimes the impression. Uh, the other disciplines uh, say, okay, now we are using AI and then they use any uh, machine learning algorithm without being aware whether this is the right one or not. Since we have to offer, we have to offer, uh, we have to offer tools uh, which are of high quality, which are somehow um, self explainable, or, yeah, or maybe also kind of assistance systems for the others. On the other hand, uh, um, I think we always have to then also to learn from this situation that our tools are used in others. And I call this quite often the kind of reactive research. We react to this and then uh, formulate our own research questions. Uh, and then we continue with our research. Uh, but at the end, with the final goal, at least from in my, my situation, to offer even better tools to the others uh, to have to use them. Uh, and the others could be other disciplines, but also could be within our discipline, the people who develop uh, software systems. But anyway, also this situation, Normally, software is developed also for other disciplines, for other areas. So what I want to say is that we need, we should not think um, it's um, not good for us that we help others. So in this sense that we are uh, in a kind of ancillary or enabling. I, I don't know whether that you make a difference between this. But I think our task is to, to support the world, the society, by our understanding, our tools. On the other hand, we should look at this when they're used, and then continue with our own research questions. This is the, the idea again in a certain years to give even to offer even better tools to the others. This is my review on this. <laughs> okay, thanks, Gregor. Uh, this was Gregor Inglis. Um, 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 I would like uh, to uh, go to the next question now. Um, uh, next slide, please. Because of the limited time we have, um, the next question would be, what structures and actions are suited best for advancing interdisciplinarity in informatics uh, research? 
regarding research collaborations within universities. What are their opportunities and challenges and what are the best ways to institutionalize interdisciplinary collaborations in research? And I would be interested in best practice examples uh, and so on, yeah. A second sub-question here, how can the assessment of interdisciplinary research uh, proposals be improved to ensure equitable treatment of discipline-specific and interdisciplinary proposals regarding funding de decisions? Because very often uh, reviewers uh, come from one specific discipline and um, do not value adequately interdisciplinary approaches. And how can we best include the outcomes of interdisciplinary research and assess them appropriately when it comes to assessing the research achievements of an informatics department or faculty or to making decisions on hiring and promotion within informatics departments and faculties. That means if um, colleagues, uh, young colleagues, uh, postdocs and so on uh, do interdisciplinary research how can we uh, adequately um, uh, evaluate that um, uh, so that uh, they do not experience uh, disadvantages from um, doing interdisciplinary research? Yeah? This, uh, I think these are very important practical questions um, uh, we should address yeah? because um, uh, that could be an agenda for the future, okay? So, any ideas, any experiences, observations, best practice, best practice examples? I would have an answer, yeah, Gregor again. Gregor, Gregor Engels from Germany. Yeah. Yeah. So, I think, uh, you know, looking at your first question, uh, best practices, uh, I think at the moment they are already quite um, established, um, yeah, uh, say, means in the uh, basic research funding in Germany, but also in Switzerland, uh, Austria, this is what I know. So you know about the COMET centers in Austria, there are the NCCRs in uh, Switzerland, there are the so-called Sonderforschungsbereiche, collaborative research centers in Germany. These are huge uh, um, yeah, pro projects where between 10 and 15 different professors are involved. And um, how are they ev evaluated? Are they are always evaluated by a team of peers. Uh, so there's not only one reviewer from one discipline, but there's always a team. And then in this uh, peer reviewing uh, sessions, uh, very interesting discussions uh, yeah, exist and are done. And uh, so that um, really then by this, the quality of the whole center uh, is, is evaluated. But so I think, this is not that bad. What is difficult also in Germany is if you uh, submit, uh, say, a two-person proposal, one person from sociology and one from um, uh, informatics, then they have problems in Germany uh, because they always uh, assign this to a certain uh, competence area within the DFG. And then yeah. this is uh, so say, okay, this is now within informatics. No, it is not in between, between two disciplines. There are difficulties at the funding organizations to uh, work with this situation. But not, they're not, they have, they're not have these difficulties with uh, huge projects, you know, like 10, 15 professors. And then there's a different organization. So what has to be improved, at least in Germany, is um, how to treat, let's say, two person proposals from two different disciplines. That is a difficulty. Yeah. So this is my experience. Okay. Only one remark, um, uh, the COMET pro uh, we don't have the same in Austria, Gregor, because the COMET projects are um, cooperation projects between science and industry. That's the main uh, target, yeah? I and know, I know quite well. There are, there are also a lot of researchers involved and uh, you're right, it's not only basic research, but um, is it bad to work with industry? I don't think so. Yeah, but... Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. okay. Okay. We have yeah, two raised hands, I think from Simone, uh, she was first, and then from okay. Enrico. So Simone, okay. please. So Simone, please. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I want to share not maybe the best practice, but an example that, that happened in, in our university. So first, first thing, first, I think that the 
policy of the university should encourage uh, interdisciplinary research and should uh, somehow um, support the organization of interdisciplinary research groups. So the example that I'm going to refer is one such groups that uh, was funded uh, around uh, high performance computer infrastructure but the main goal of the group was uh, some kind of environmental science, right? With disaster management, pollution and so on. And that was uh, very nice because actually could group together, not only people from environment uh, sciences, but also from physics, uh, chemistry, uh, biology and so on. So this is the, pet, the, the frame, let's say. And, um, not only we as a department the computer sciences, since there is the HPS uh, infrastructure, the high performance computing, but also the one from mathematics department in order to provide some kind of uh, modeling optimization and simulations were, were included. But they, uh, that's a very good infrastructure and a very good collaboration, but on the other hand, how is assessed and how the outcomes are um, uh, awarded and the project that is going definitely to the application domain. So uh, most of the publications are within that application domain that not, so not publication in uh, computer science. Uh, when they apply, for example, for research funds, again, they go to the application domain, to environmental sciences rather than to computer science. So in some way, we are, how our, some of our previous speaker mentioned that the first, uh, first question, we are the ones that providing tools, right? So uh, they do not necessarily look at us as being able to, um, uh, I don't know, promote some kind of research results rather than be a tool for promoting their results or verifying, simulating them. Okay, thank you, Simona. Enrico, you are the next one. Yeah, my uh, short comment was regarding uh, regards the evaluation of this interdisciplinary research proposal. The only way of appropriately evaluating them is by people who has done interdisciplinary research. If these research are evaluated by two panels, each one of experts of their own discipline, that will it will never go through. Of course, there is a bootstrap problem. If in your university you don't have experts in interdisciplinary research, it's difficult to start, but you can look to other universities, you look to other countries. But the, the evaluation of interdisciplinary research needs to be done by interdisciplinary people. This okay. should be a requirement. I don't know if from the, 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 the workshop of today, we will come out with a, a report with some recommendation, but if there is a, such a thing, then this should be a, a, a recommendation to guide our community in this area. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, other observations, comments, best practice examples? Does anyone have experience uh, with interdisciplinary research centers at your universities? As a kind of structure of, and in, uh, to institutionalize interdisciplinary research. Would that be an appropriate instrument? And what are the experiences you have? Okay, Gregor, again, yeah, let me uh, help you. Jean-Marc uh, Jean raised his hand. Um, I, we, we, we have an, an, an experience in our university, which is a lightweight uh, multidisciplinary disciplinary research by which the university is actually funding a small set of, uh, of uh, PhDs each year. I mean, small, it's something like five or something each year, where uh, you have to be in partnership with another lab from another discipline. 
And uh, then uh, the, this is a very light project in the sense that it's just the subject of a PhD that is going to be co-supervised by two different disciplines. And I think that's one way of doing it because, um, you know, if you're doing some kind of curiosity-driven research, you don't need a very well research plan with, you know, milestones and deliverable and like, you really need to explore stuff and to be, uh, to work with other people and just by curiosity driven stuff, do interesting stuff. And I think that's one possibility that is not too costly to, um, to start up uh, a number of, of, uh, of interdisciplinary uh, research. And uh, again, evaluating that is very difficult. So just do not evaluate it. I mean, just look at the CV of the, who are the, the advisors. If they are good enough, just give them the money and that's it. That's what I would say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great idea, yeah. Um, Gregor. Yeah, what we have at our university is that we have the typical faculty structure. We have five faculties, uh, like for mechanical engineering and uh, uh, economics and so on. In addition, we have uh, horizontally so-called uh, central scientific uh, units. Uh, and so we have one for digital humanities. We have one other one for um, uh, software innovation. We have another one for uh, direct manufacturing issues. And these um, central units are cross-cutting the faculties and so our researchers from different faculties are working together in these centers. And uh, all the projects, um, these interdisciplinary projects are then have, um, uh, uh, allocated in these centers. So this means that, uh, but I, I assume that this is normal for any university that you have besides the disciplinary faculties, they also, especially the teaching is located. Uh, there are research uh, organizations which are cross-cutting horizontally in uh, a university. And we have a lot of experience with this. And uh, does it work well, Gregor? And um, there are some questions. Um, how are they funded? Um, uh, where are they located? Who owns them? Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, if you look at your, uh, your colleagues, uh, then it's always the case that uh, you can forget about 50% of them uh, because they are only working in their own uh, chair and they don't want to cooperate and uh, you cannot use them. But uh, they are always especially younger people. So it's always interesting to, spend, to speak to younger people and to convince them, but they even have not to convince because younger people are much more open to uh, interdisciplinary research. And then uh, you will find colleagues and uh, always uh, ask those colleagues uh, who are really willing to cooperate. And then that is um, um, yeah, also successful. Uh, they belong to the university um, council or board. Uh, so they are the um, they are central um, yeah, scientific uh, units. Uh, so they belong to the university and uh, they has to be, uh, uh, have to be reported to the board and to the senate of the university. And uh, it, then it differs from each of these uh, um, or, or, uh, units, um, whether they are uh, financed also by the board. Um, so instance, I'm heading um, such a unit, the Software Innovation Lab in Paderborn, and we, got, we get every year 1 million euro from the board to run this interdisciplinary cross-cutting research lab. So I have 10 people hired, of, not hired, yeah, hired in my group uh, to do the research and also the organizational work. And there are others have limit, more limited uh, resources, but there's always something like uh, between 100 and 200,000 euros uh, basic support for this. Okay, thanks. Uh, Guadana, could you share your experiences uh, with us? Oh, I can just uh, point to the, to the link. I'm here for, for, from Chalmers side because Ivica, who is representative, he is in the uh, he, he is in the meeting right now. So uh, I, I can just say that, the, uh, that there are those areas of advance which are exactly as, as Gregor said, horizontal and they combine, but you know, they combine what Chalmers has and we are technical universities. So th those are technical disciplines. But uh, we have small projects uh, and uh, uh, people connect uh, horizontally all over the Chalmers, different dif disciplines. So, so it's, it's a, a, a lot of a good uh, initiative and everything, but those are very small projects. They are very small, okay, yeah. 
Uh, or from the point of view of individual. So yeah, yeah. If you, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Any additional uh, opinions on that? Olivier Goletti uh, wrote uh, something in the chat. Um, would you uh, share it with us? Would you like to share it with us? Yes, I can. Uh, so I'm just uh, yeah giving a testimony. So I'm doing uh, my, my PhD uh, uh, in CS education research. And uh, in my university, there is no in interdisciplinary department doing both education and, and computer science. So I'm, I'm doing it in uh, the computer science department. And uh, indeed, as uh, Gregor said, there, there is always someone that can agree to jump on board with you uh, to, to supervise you, but sometimes you need more uh, specific uh, profile that have uh, knowledge in, in both discipline. So this is not that easy to find. So here I have the chance to have another supervisor from a university where she has her own CS ed uh, research group. And that is easier for me to do than this interdisciplinary research. But it was more of a, a comment and, and a testimony but we don't have specific infrastructure for that in our university and I think it's needed. Okay, thanks. Uh, Enrico. Yeah, just two quick comments. First one is uh, uh, informatics education research is interdisciplinary. We, we, we have to be aware that we cannot uh, uh, provide useful suggestion on how to teach informatics if we don't uh, discuss this with people experts in, in teaching. And therefore it is, it is important and in the, in the session of Monday morning we uh, discussed the, 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 the fact that uh, informatics education research should become an important field of research in all, in all departments in Europe because uh, we have to, to produce methods uh, quickly. We don't have uh, uh, 20 or 50 years in front of us, like other disciplines have had to understand how to teach the, the basis of the disciplines. Uh, so this is the first comment. And the other comment, uh, I want to uh, um, um, stress something that Jean-Marc told in uh, his uh, in, in, um, remark regarding evaluation. I, I think we are a bit overstressing the role of evaluation, above all, evaluation ex ante of research proposal, because research is a highly uncertain endeavor. And we have to resist the way of uh, uh, evaluating them like people do in, uh, in industry or, or, or in company, where you, of course, have to do uh, actual plan. In, in research, uh, you should be able to, to, to come up with some proposal and have a little way of, a little, evaluation just to check, I mean, whether you are a reasonable person, you have produced something uh, good in the past, and then uh, give, give uh, people space to do uh, curiosity-driven research, which means uh, not, not uh, asking you to promise things that, uh, I mean, you don't know, because they, if, if it's a research, you cannot, uh, you cannot promise. This is uh, important. I think in, in the last 10, 20 years, we have, uh, we, we have let people uh, from other fields uh, to impose to us, the university, a way of work that is not ours. So we have to regain our freedom of working in the way that is best suited to our, to our, uh, this, our, our field. That's it. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Enrico. Uh, what about, yeah, uh, Gregor? I can just recommend, uh, because uh, to Olivier, the, the problem nowadays is really that uh, the PhD education is also located in Germany in faculties. So if you would like to do a, a PhD in, a, let's say, in a kind of cost-cutting or interdisciplinary research area, then uh, at my university you need, uh, um, yeah, all the professors in the committee have to be from, from your own faculty or from one faculty. And then it's very difficult if you do, uh, if your second supervisor, let's say, is sitting in another faculty, that's difficult, not, not, not planned in Germany. 
so uh, I was fighting for this that uh, we have to um, uh, to, to change the also the PhD regulations in this sense that it's much easier to do this. Uh, but we, Olivier, in, in my university, we have the uh, computer science education chair within the computer science uh, group, so that's the both sense and easier. But I know um, there are also people in my group who would like to do a kind of yeah, a kind of a, a, a PhD which covers two disciplines, and we are really heavily fighting to do this to find them the supervisors and so on. So we have to change the PhD rules. Okay, thanks, uh, Gregor. <clears throat> We uh, have also uh, Majorana, uh, I think Francesco yeah. Majorana, who raised his hand. Okay, uh, so uh, one uh, last uh, contribution, uh, because time is running out. Uh, so uh, the floor is yours. Hi, I'm Francesco Majorana, I'm affiliated with the University of Rubino. Very quickly, I share my experience uh, and uh, I start from uh, Kansas State University, where the interdisciplinary research uh, I have been involved with is uh, with uh, undergraduate project, um, undergraduate research project that by design has to be interdisciplinary. And the second experience is at the University of Urbino, my current affiliation, where there is a PhD course uh, uh, research method in science and, uh, and technology that by design is uh, interdisciplinary with course ranging of the discipline and finally at the University of Catania uh, where I was involved in the in European project uh, interdisciplinary by nature uh, covering uh, many aspects uh, from informatics uh, to um, medicine and so on. Regarding uh, my, my comment, uh, I agree with uh, uh, Rico comments uh, on uh, how to uh, review a project. Uh, uh, the, uh, the head of the team deciding has to be uh, with interdisciplinary experience having uh, uh, one way to solve the bootstrap problem uh, could be involved uh, as uh, other components, uh, domain expert uh, in different uh, disciplines. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, uh, now uh, we uh, are at the end of the first session because uh, it's, um, already 9.50 uh, and uh, thank you for your contributions for uh, the discussion and I will hand over to Bart Damon uh, for the teaching session. Um, okay, so let me thank you Gerard once again. This was very, very inspiring and I had a hard time keeping up making, making notes and sorry for not contributing but it's also not my task. So uh, okay, so many thanks to Gerald, and now we move to education, and the chair will be Bart Demon from, from uh, Belgium. Bart, you. are you online? Yes, 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 I am here. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, a little bit quiet, I think. A little bit quiet, let me try it. Is it better now? Pull out, there's a lot of noise. Let me tell me what's going there's some noise. Better now? That's good. Okay. okay. It's a little bit kind of on the noise side still, but it's very good. I don't know what I can do about it. Yeah, um, can let me introduce myself shortly. Um, my name is Bart. Ah, sorry, sorry, so, so, sorry, Bart. Can you lower your microphone level a little bit more? Because your voice is very loud. Is it better? Yes. Has it, cha has it changed at all? Yes. Yeah. It, it, it's yeah. Now, 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 I think it's good. Please continue to speak. Let's see. Let's. Yes. Uh, let me oh. restart introducing myself. Um, I'm emeritus professor from the Department of Computer Science at the University of Leuven in Belgium. I represent um, an organization that is worried about 
the teaching of computer science in secondary school um, after a number of years we have had some success there so let me uh, introduce my questions i have three there are two on this slide uh, the three questions broadly fall in the categories of uh, question one is a why question the second question is about what and the third one is about how and um, you could read the question for yourself and the gist of this question is actually quite different from the first question of Gerald in the first session um, where he was worried about the uh, status and the, the role of computer science as a discipline. I'm not so much worried about computer science or uh, informatics. I'm worried about having a good argument to give to our uh, policy makers, our politicians, to um, make new for instance, a bachelor in uh, bioinformatics, because that's always a struggle. One needs a very good motivation to do that. The second question is related to what should we as computer scientists push to be taught in these uh, interdisciplinary um, directions in, uh, at the university, and maybe even in secondary school, because we have this integrated uh, science, technology, engineering and mathematics uh, stream, where there is also some flavor of interdisciplinarity. And the third question, if you can go to the next slide, I prefer to present all of them together so that uh, we can discuss them all together. Uh, what are the best practices for interdisciplinary teaching uh, where we include informatics? Should we use team teaching? It must involve problem-based, project-based didactics. And do we have showcases that show a substantial benefit for both informatics and the other discipline uh, of combining them. Since all of you are probably in teaching uh, or have been in teaching, I expect that you have comments on all these questions. Thank you. Let me perhaps elaborate a bit on the second question. Can you show this again? The one slide back. Yeah. Um, I've looked at the bioinformatics, the master of bioinformatics curriculum uh, in Leuven. And from the point of view of informatics, it's it, absolutely, it's, uh, I cried almost. They require almost no insight in our methods. They teach a bit of um, basic programming a bit of software engineering, and they learn about databases. And that's all that they learn about our discipline. And I cannot believe that this is a good way to go. I suppose and I hope that in other countries this is different. I see a raised hands by Enrico and by yeah. Pekka. I think Pekka was first yeah well maybe every question okay so sorry i should be taking notes and not speaking but then maybe every question going to say the same thing but actually i think this question was raised in one of the sessions on the first day that should we define some kind of a core curriculum of computer, computer informatics for uh, interdisciplinary collaborations i guess and maybe every wants to say the same thing but this was i remember this was this issue was raised yeah I mean, you're right, Pekka. I was to touch this this, this issue, uh, and not not only in connection with interdisciplinary uh, curriculum, but in general, because I think uh, the, the 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 principle should be that the informatics we want uh, uh, every interdisciplinary researchers know is the core, uh, the common intersection of uh, every. Uh, field of informatics in itself. So uh, the, the core, the common core is the same whether you you take a, a degree in informa in pure informatics or whether you take a degree in informatics and X, with X uh, the, your favorite uh, external field. And I, I think this is, uh, this, is, uh, this is important. This is also a, a bit different from the approach they have taken outside Europe where they are seeing uh, uh, more than a core with uh, various uh, uh, appendices, they are seeing a computing uh, as a, a set of parallel disciplines without uh, 
a common core. I think in, in Europe we have more this vision of a common core that uh, then uh, which has various, uh, if we could, can call them, a, a application. And I think this issue of the common core, it's, uh, it's, it's important to us not only for our discipline in itself, but also even more maybe for interdisciplinary curriculum. Uh, so this was my remark on question two, and I have also one more remark on question one, which is uh, uh, something I've been uh, saying since many, many years, and uh, also Jean-Marc uh, wrote in the, in, in, the com, in the chat box earlier, and actually, it, it was something that I discovered that was said by Donald Knut many, many, many years ago in discussing the difference between mathematics and informatics. The comment by Jean-Marc was that uh, informatics is going to be uh, a replacement for mathematics or a, at least as important as mathematics. <coughs> Sorry. The point is that, uh, and this is what uh, Knut said, that the, I mean, before, before this, the essence of mathematics is to give us a way of uh, speaking quantitatively about the world in a precise way. This is something we cannot do with language without mathematics. We can say something that is too little, uh, too much, uh, infinite, like the sky or none at all, but we don't have a way of expressing these uh, issues in a precise way. Mathematics is the answer. So the mathematics, you need mathematics to precisely express quantitative relations, precisely describe these, uh, and help the language to be consistent. But then the, the mathematical answer, this is what Knut said, the mathematical answer to a problem is a formula, is a formula expressing some relations between the element of the solution. This is different from the informatics answer to solution. The informatics answer to solution is a process describing what's going on. It, it, the, the, the final implementation of this process is, is a program, I mean, in some computer language, but the idea is that it is a process and the process means that you need to have an algorithm and you have to have an automata and you have to have a language. So these are the, the, the conceptual element that makes uh, our disciplines uh, worth teaching in an in interdisciplinary context. Because whenever you take this viewpoint on the world, then you can describe uh, from a different uh, perspective what's going to happen. You can describe what's going to happen in the life science, what's going to happen in social science, what's going to happen in, 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 economic, in economics, economical field. And this is not, this, this do not imply that you are replacing other way of looking at this phenomenon. But this is a complementary and uh, al I mean, good way of describing phenomena. And this is this alternative way that is typical of informatics, the process-oriented approach, the algorithmic-oriented approach, if you prefer to use the term algorithm. But if you use algorithm, you miss the, the component of the machine, the automata. And remember that Donald Knut, he wrote a wonderful algorithm, but he also wrote his own language and his own automata to make the algorithms precise. So I think this is the, the, the key element for interdisciplinary, the interdisciplinary value of teaching informatics. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Open G. You raised your hand. Yes, hello, Bart. Hello. So, um, um, about the why, I think it's quite important to teach informatics to all those disciplines that will need to use it anyway. And, and therefore, it's important to give them the proper concepts. Like uh, Enrico said, I think those concepts are quite the same in the core, at least, of what informatics is and how it will be used in those different disciplines. Um, so on the why, I think, it will be mainly used for modeling and also it was said in the comments that it was the, the new mathematics of science. So for all the scientific disciplines, it need to be taught. Um, there are uh, examples of uh, physics uh, students that have a better understanding of derivation or integrals through doing it uh, computationally. So. I think it helps them have a different perspective on the same scientific subject. So that's for the why. For the what, I think 
there shouldn't be a, a only one introduce uh, introductory co uh, programming course that is the same for all disciplines. Um, I think uh, each discipline has its own needs, and we should, when we want to give an interdisciplinary course, uh, start from the needs of the discipline and not just push our agenda of the, the main topics that we see as important is in computer science. Um, and, and this is linked with the, the answer to the question three, where you, you ask for uh, showcases. So I, I, I was in a, in a meeting last week uh, in an Erasmus Plus project. Um, I can give details after, but it was um, explaining what they did in Oslo. Uh, Michael Kasperson was, was there, and I think he's on the board, so maybe I could ask him more about that. But he was explaining from the, the, the idea was presenting how they introduced uh, computer science for in, in the, the science faculty. And so it, there were three different courses that were totally separate from the uh, computer science majors. And there was one for uh, physics, one for biology, and one for chemists. And each time they, they departed from the, the discipline, the disciplinary content, and from what they needed, they, they introduced the, the computer science concepts one at a time. And it was really an introductory course that introduced both concepts from the scientific discipline and also from the computer science discipline. I think it's the right approach because it will allow students to discover computer science and programming in a way that interests them. And there will be less rebuttal because we know that computer science can be hard if it's forced on them, especially in disciplines where they did not choose, let's say, to do computer science. So I think that's very important. Um, however, what I want to stress is that I think that computer science concepts should be at least taught before uh, throwing the students in to open projects. So even though it's a inter interdisciplinary course, concepts should be taught first and then used in interdisciplinary contexts. I hear often say something about the core of computer science or informatics, and um, that we should just teach that to the other disciplines. Um, but for me, it's not about the contents of the course. I mean, you don't want to teach to a person in literature the algorithms for graphs, uh, per se, uh, but you want to make them think like a computer scientist when they want to solve their own problems. And in this respect, um, teaching them to program misses the point. We should teach them uh, just to use the word, um, how we think. And even you said that about question two, there was a previous discussion in another session. Uh, what was the outcome? Um, well, let me make a general comment. I think uh, in universities, interdisciplinary education is a kind of a, well, principal problem due to the very way that a typical university is organized. So normally we are organized into faculties or schools or whatever. Um, and these faculties or schools and sometimes department, departments within those take the responsibility for teaching and for the courses. And just by this responsibility structure, it becomes, well, truly difficult to do anything which is interdisciplinary because every course um, needs to be well somewhere where one of those organizations takes responsibility for offering the course, for paying the instructor, for putting it into curricula, etc. Um, so uh, even 
when you try doing something like an interdisciplinary curriculum, it turns out that um, they are typically composed of, well, disciplinary courses that go together where the um, say responsibility for something is then again rooted in one of the disciplinary faculties or schools or whatever. And that the interdisciplinarity comes somehow indirectly by putting, well, a selection of, a proper selection of disciplinary courses together. And even when you have a kind of a um, new organization who tries to do these things. So I remember uh, ETH Zurich in the 1990s started a new study topics called the environmental sciences. And they actually also did it with an organization. So they formed a kind of a um, department who was responsible for teaching, etc. But nevertheless, they were heavily struggling for getting, well, a program together, which was more than uh, courses from chemistry, from uh, physics, from informatics, etc. So that it really became focused on that on that topic and was not just a collection of things that people need. So um, it is really a, a major challenge, um, particularly due to the way how universities are organized. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I have the same feeling about this. And I see that Gregor also made uh, some chat notes. Maybe he wants to elaborate on that. Gregor? Uh, in the meantime, I can... I'm still here, but uh, I, was, uh, um, I was not listening, to be honest. Okay, can you uh, again ask me? You uh, said something on the chat. Huh? So can you elaborate on that? Okay, this was an answer to what John Mark was writing. So that he says uh, you need two points. Uh, um, that science is about building predictive models and confronting them with reality. And I was only... Uh, answering to him that I am afraid that most of my colleagues uh, are only dealing with their own predictive models, but they are not willing to, uh, to, to speak to other disciplines and to, uh, um, to, to, to understand whether they are really helpful for other disciplines. So that, uh, I think we speak about a, a very important topic here, but I think we have to be aware that not all of our colleagues are on this track that we have to speak to other disciplines. You don't, I, I, I fully agree, but the question also is how we do we teach the computer scientists to think in this way, what we are discussing here. Yes. Um, yeah. Enrico? Yes, yes. Uh, no, uh, the, the, this observation by Gregor reminded to me one uh, um, outrageous uh, proposal that I put forward some time ago to my colleagues in Italy which was uh, to, to establish in, in the final years of the degree, uh, the equivalent of what they have uh, in, uh, in medicine. Uh, I, I don't know the exact term, but basically the last year of medicines, the uh, students uh, go into the hospital and they go along the real cases and help the professor to, to diagnose and to solve the real cases. So the, 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 the terms in Italy is uh, clinique, so clinical uh, activity, where you don't, don't uh, simply solve the problem in abstract, but you consider a real problem and you identify the, the solution. And so I said, maybe we should have some kind of courses like this, where, for example, I don't know, for public administration, we help them to diagnose their, diagnose their problem and help find a solution because then in this case you are confronted not just with the theoretical uh, database design or uh, software requirements specification in abstract but you do it in a in a in a, in a, in a real life situation which is always uh, there is some difference with, between the theory and practice i 
think we also need to give a word to Jean-Marc, who made very interesting comment in the chart box. Yes, I missed that one. Uh, you're right. Jean-Marc? Yeah. Yeah, yeah my, my point, I mean, it's, it's, it's in, the, in the chat. It's, it's, science is really, any, any kind of science, true science, is really about building models and then confronting these models to reality to check whether the model is, is close enough to reality to be any useful. And uh, when the, 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 the science is, is simple enough, such as the Newtonian physics, then the model could be a, a mathematical model and it can be solved uh, analytically uh, to a, a certain extent. I mean, uh, for Newtonian physics, uh, it works as long as you have two bodies, but as, as soon as you have a third body, then there is no analytic solution, no analytic mathematical solution to that. So you have to resort to another way of solving uh, the equation, which is basically through, uh, through uh, uh, computation and through informatics. And so as soon as the science is, is complex, which is quite soon actually, uh, you need informatics to build the model that are going to be useful. And, and, and and people are not really realizing that outside of, of our field, I would say. And they still believe that they are using a mathematical model, which is somehow true, but the mathematical model is actually embedded in, in a computer and it is solved by, it is not solved analytically, it is solved by uh, computation, actually. So um, it means that the, the future of science, and I, I really speak any kind of science, is building uh, uh, informatic models. And for that, I think it's core of what should be a multidisciplinary approach because any scientist in any discipline, I mean, social scientist, biologist, environmental science, even uh, high energy physics and the like, they, they, they would need in the, in the future and, and right now actually to, to have uh, 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 informatics models that they should understand. I mean, each, and right now the problem is that these models, they are actually using them, but they are black, black boxes. They do not really understand what's going on there. And I think that's uh, when we're talking about multidisciplinary uh, in that direction, it's, it's probably very important to, to convey that, that vision to our colleague from the other sciences. We try to do that. And I think that it's, it, it, when you explain them, it, it actually works, but it takes a lot of time because it's, it's very shocking for them because they, 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 they are thinking of themselves as, as uh, using as mathematicians, as applied mathematicians, and, they are, and, and many sciences, they are not that. And so it's, uh, it's quite interesting. So in that direction, I think it's, uh, it's uh, I would say that informatics is really the core of, is by definition multidisciplinary, as soon as you are doing another science, you need to do uh, informatics more. So that's mm -hmm. my point. Yeah, I, I think you answered uh, my first question the motivation for doing interdisciplinary research or education teaching, uh, including informatics, right? Yes. Thank you. I see a, a, a long chat from Francesco. Um, did people read that? Um, do you want to elaborate on that, Francesco? Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, in, I just uh, sharing my experience uh, as an educator in undergraduate course uh, in a different uh, faculty. Uh, I usually start from asking uh, to the professor or to the educator what are the needs of the discipline uh, and try to adapt uh, what are uh, their core contents uh, and um, ideas of uh, computing uh, to the realm of the other disciplines. Uh, this work very, um, this work quite well because students uh, are more engaged uh, in the project you could propose, problem project 
whatever. Uh, thank you very much for the suggestion from Enrico and uh, sharing uh, the thought of notes. Uh, in my experience, this uh, providing an overview of algorithms autonomous and uh, languages provide um, uh, a very good uh, overview of what computing is, uh, but it's more suitable maybe uh, to uh, uh, students learning majoring in computing. And this resembles uh, to me um, um, uh, to cover all the major aspects of computing. Regarding the other um, aspect uh, or uh, the proposal of Enrico about clinics, the equivalent in clinics in medicine, uh, in some country um, they run, uh, including Italy, in, there are experience in running uh, uh, open source software that could be either with a humanitarian approach or not. Uh, where the students are uh, the undergraduate uh, last year on their undergraduate studies, uh, either choose to do a thesis uh, or uh, to be involved in a, what they call a common project, uh, uh, where a community of people try to develop uh, and, um, and participate to solve a real problem by designing and developing a project. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> On my clock, we are attending the session soon. Uh, so I would uh, ask you if anybody has still something to say. Yes, I, 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 I would like to make just a, a, a little remark on strategy because uh, I may be convinced that, uh, I mean, I'm convinced that our discipline is as important as mathematics, uh, um, but I think we have to be careful uh, about being, uh, about making two bold st statements towards the outside. I mean, if we say um, informatics will replace math in science in the third millennium, the, the, the most probable uh, thing that will happen is a, a reaction. So maybe this will happen in a, a century. I, I don't know. I, I don't have the crystal ball. But uh, th there isn't a real need of uh, uh, going to war with the rest of the uh, mathematical world, uh, mainly for the reason we are too weak, too, 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 too few to, to be able to win. So. We have to be clever in our uh, in our uh, strategy, um, and insist on the fact that uh, what is important in our disciplines is the the, the approach uh, that we provide to to students, uh, which is this process focused approach. Um, Jean Marc uh, made, made a, a very good point about the fact that every science uses uh, some informatics tools, but then they use them as a black box and they do not really understand what's going on because they just write program and they because they want to compute some number but they have not understood the, the, the processes uh, which are running therefore we have to insist on, on, on this we have to insist that the added value is in modeling science phenomena with a process oriented view which is typical of informatics which is a uh, I mean, can uh, stand side by side with those of with the approach of mathematics. In some fields, it's, in some cases, it's the only possible approach because simply, as Jean-Marc again said, uh, the, 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 the reality is too complex to be modeled by differential equation. Or maybe you, mo you can model it, but then there is no solution. And, then, and, then, and that's it. So let's, let's insist on this. Uh, uh, conceptual uh, advantage that we have in some cases. The, uh, uh, let's insist on the fact that uh, it is important that uh, students in other science uh, understand the, the the importance of informatics viewpoint, and then uh, time will uh, will uh, will work on our side. Okay, I, I will uh, stop this session. Um, by just 
tell you something about my personal experience in recent years. I'm trying to set up a research group at the computer science department in Leuven uh, on teaching computer science. And it's amazing how few professors who are teaching computer science are interested in that. They, they just don't care about it. Um, and for us, it's very difficult. The, the small core of people that want to make an advance uh, progress in this field, uh, we have been focusing too much on teaching computer science to students in computer science and to people who are really interested in informatics. And I think from this discussion, I conclude that we should focus much more on teaching uh, computer science to people who are not per se interested in computer science. Uh, and make them clear that it is important for them, but starting from their field and, and not from our point of view, we will teach them our algorithms and they will have to eat them and digest them, uh, but to see what their needs are and then prove to them this is important for you and we can make a difference for you, for your research, for your education, for your teaching. And I want to thank you for that. It's probably time to go to the coffee break. Yeah. Okay, so thank you, Bart, and thank you, Gerald, and thank you for all the participants with the very active discussion. I've taken tons of notes and would have liked to participate in a key, would have liked to participate in the discussion, but that's not my role. So next time. Um, so now, as Bart was saying, so we have a coffee break of, um, well, actually 10 plus minutes. So, so let's get back to, back to the next session at 10.40. So at about uh, 30 minutes, 40 minutes from now. <laughs>